Hello and welcome back. That's right, today we're going to find out whether if you're running a Synology NAS that has got DSM 7.1 and has unofficial memory inside, what happens when you upgrade to DSM 7.2, the newer and more featured operating system from Synology. And we're going to be doing a couple of different tests today to find out exactly what happens. So, before we go any further, quick disclaimer off the bat. Have you noticed how close everything is packed in right now? That's because I'm trying to make sure everything's as covered as possible so to get all of dsm in and get our exchange of um the memory modules later on in the video all into the video we've had to cram it in consequently the mic is very very close to the keyboard of the laptop which has got fans and the NAS. so i apologize in advance for any background hum i'll try my best to edit it out in post but it's very hard to remove all of that when you're in this much close proximity next i will highlight that this at the moment is a ds923 this ds923 is currently running dsm 7.1 it's dsm 71142962 if you care update number five and we'll be upgrading to dsm 7.2 on this system so do bear in mind that today's tests are being conducted all within this system there's a very good chance that this will uh, the same results will apply to any other nas in the Synology lineup but just bear in mind that these tests are kind of indicative of this system for these tests and lastly if you are going to go down the unofficial memory route i always make a point of saying this in all the videos do know that that means you are probably using the system outside of the supported um, kind of configuration by Synology. So just always bear that in mind if you're going to be using third-party memory moving forward. I know it seems a bit namby-pamby, but it's important. If you are going to use third-party memory, always use the um, Synology Assistant tool, which has a memory test facility in it. So regardless, of you, even if you're going to use first-party memory, use that memory testing tool. But let's crack straight on. I've already downloaded DSM 7.2 for this system. Inside right now, this NAS has got two 16 gig crucial DDR4 modules in there. They're the same ones we've used for other tests. They will be linked in the description. And this DSM 7.1 NAS has got both of those 16 gig modules and our 32 gig. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead in that control panel and update ourselves. So we want to head over to the update and restore, manual DSM update, click browse. We then need to head into the download section and there is DSM 7.1. Point two for this system so we can go ahead click OK and then what's going to happen now is this system is now going to get ready to upgrade this from DSM 7.1 to DSM 7.2 it's just now uploading that and it will invite us to restart the system but it will warn us that it will terminate some processes and as you can see it is highlighting some of the differences that are rolled into DSM 7.2 that's stuff that you can find out later on but if we move forward we can go ahead and click update and now we're going to restart the system after the installation of DSM 7.2 on this NAS. Now, while it does that, again, this could take, you know, five to ten minutes. Again, I'll fast forward later on. But just while it's doing that in the background, I will highlight that, again, you can get Synology's own memory modules for their systems. You don't have to go third party. But it's just a real shame that their memory, being ECC, can work out remarkably expensive. Even the non-ECC modules can work out pretty pricey. So just bear in mind that the Synology do have their own memory modules out there, but it's understandable why many of us won't opt for their own memory. Now, if this reboot, because I'll be straight with you, I've never conducted this test before, so I don't know how this is going to end. But if this system reboots and allows us to continue with our third party memory using DSM 7.2, the next thing I'm going to do is power down the system and move away from our crucial modules and make our way into some excessive modules here. Now this is two Samsung 32 gig modules there. This puts the configuration outside of the maximum 32 gig supported by this system and that processor officially there why am i doing it well because a number of you from other tests that we've done not only on this channel but other platforms as well have shown that you can utilize greater than the maximum memory inside these systems there are still question marks about how much of it can be utilized how there are still question marks about just how much at any given time can be assigned or utilized by that cpu at any given time and therefore exceeding those cpu maximums might be completely redundant anyway but still nonetheless i think a number of you would want to know that if you are running configurations that are greater than the officially supported maximum in the case of this now 32 gig 
you want to know or if you exceed that will dsm 7.2 be a problem there so again once this is rebooted which it sounds like it is at the moment because normally if you hit an issue with regards to the restart the system doesn't spin up those discs and we've already heard those discs start to spin up there once we've tested whether this has uh, recognized those two 16 gig crucial modules in dsm 7.2 We'll action that restart and make our way over to the Samsung there. And for that, I think we will cut forward because you've already seen me test uh, 32 gig modules on the DS923 Plus and we have seen them working. It's just a question of whether they're going to work in DSM 7.2. But for now, what I'm going to do is just wait a little bit longer, maybe fast forward and we'll wait until this system reboots. Let's fast forward. And it looks like we've got ourselves a beep there, which is always a good sign. We're getting to the conclusion of the DSM 7.2 update. Do bear in mind, again, major scale updates, unlike normal incremental smaller uh, kind of hotfix updates and security updates, the bigger ones do present a screen like this. So don't be alarmed that the fact that this update is presenting you with this screen here. That's completely normal because a large scale update generally means that a lot of individual packages that are already running on the system need to be individually updated. So unfortunately that is going to add a little bit more time to the restart here. But don't worry, what we're going to do is fast forward once again and to the completion of the update of all of those individual applications. Okay, so the system has installed all of those individual app updates for this and 7.2. I've had a coffee, a sandwich, so sue me, you're not my real dad. But here we are back on the screen. As normal when you update to DSM 7.2, we've got lots of notifications here about reinforcing our login. We're not going to go for reinstalling those now, but ignore what you see on screen. I strongly recommend you use two or three tier login methods for your Synology, but this is not the video for that. As you can see, we've had to restart the system again because of those individual applications. So the system's been up and running for about nine minutes, even though the updates took about 25, 30 minutes overall. And we can make our way into the control panel and that information center. I'm pleased to confirm, boom, we've got DSM 7.2 installed and there is the two 16 gig modules our crucial memory is still visible indeed if we go into the resource one there we can double check there go into the memory and we've got that allocatable memory just like we had in dsm 7.1 again we are still using third party memory again disclaimer you are using a system outside of the intended case scenario that synology present these two again so it may affect your support bear that in mind but Next thing we want to know is what about if we exceed that amount? What if we do utilize those large memory modules to see if DSM 7.2 has got any kind of limitations there? So what we're going to do now is re we're going to shut down this system. So let's go ahead there and we're going to shut down the NAS. And then from there, what we're going to do is remove those crucial memory sticks and install our Kingston memory. I'm sorry to be so repetitious in what I'm saying. I'm just trying to do as few cuts as possible so you guys can see everything that we're doing there. But again depending on the NAS you use, obviously the memory limitations are going to differ. In the case of this system and that CPU, you can't exceed 32 gig officially by both the CPU and Synology themselves recommending a maximum 32 gig. But again, people do sometimes exceed that. Whether you can utilize it, it does depend on the CPU and its own lane control there. But still nonetheless, we don't know if DSM 7.2 is going to do any kind of fixed restrictions there for users that like to exceed the recommended maximum, maximum there overall. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fast forward to the installation of the sticks. I'll include the actual power on, but I don't think you need to watch me install these one by one too much. Well, let's see if it's going to spin down. Actually, I might be able to include it anyway, not to bore you too much. Uh, but let's remove those there. Normally... You should leave a NAS for a much longer time than I'm going to, to let the disc spin down. But again, for the sake of including all this in the recording for you guys, I'm going to be a little bit more hands-on. But again, strongly recommend you take a little bit longer time than I'm showing you here in order to remove drives from a powered down system because the drives will be spinning down. So do be very, very careful there. So again, we've got those crucial sticks inside. We're going to remove those one by one it's our first crucial stick gone Remove our second crucial stick boom done and we're going to replace it with the kingston there so let's go ahead and turn that around ignore the loud noises let's 
slide that stick in there. Number one, listen for the click. Both of those clicked in. Yes, they have. Let's get our next module. There's our next module there. Again, listen for the click. There's the click. All secured, all in. Replace the drives. And again, normally you would disconnect the power as well during this. So again, I appreciate, I'm not showing you uh, the most safeguarded way to do what we're doing here today, but it's just the easiest way to show you in one set go. Hopefully this is still uh, on screen there for you guys to see. And we're gonna go ahead now and boot up with our two 32 gig sticks in DSM 7.2. We'll leave that there and let's see how long this takes. So again, we've got that power down there off screen again. All of the modules that I'm utilizing today are linked in the description below, along with a full uh, breakdown and guide on what we're doing here. Again, how long this takes may differ quite substantially because when you do swap out new memory modules, sometimes the system takes longer than normal to reboot for the very first time when you're upgrading the memory. But I think for now, what I'm gonna do is rather than you guys having to stare at me talking nonstop, I'm gonna fast forward, but leave this on camera, hopefully cycling through. But I can already start to hear those drives beginning to spin, which is a very good sign. But for now, I'm gonna roll away and fast forward the camera now. Okay, so let's double check and see what we've got. Can we refresh this page yet? Let's find out. Is it going to allow us in? No, I think, oh no, we've got the login screen. So let's go ahead, get our login while I'm typing at this rather bizarre angle there. Boom, let's go in. No doubt it's going to invite us to, once again, uh, two-step authentication. It's really, really adamant that I do that and I will do that again. I recommend anyone to do that. But for now, it's gonna go ahead and proceed. And it looks like we're absolutely fine. The system has rebooted. We can head into the control panel, into the control panel, and boom. Just like when in our DSM 7.1 test, this system was able to see both of those 32 gig sticks within DSM 7.2. But once again, we need to factor in that we are still utilizing more memory than the recommended maximum of that CPU and what Synology state for this system. And indeed, that these tests are applicable really to this system right now. And it's not fully representative of what you might see if you're using an unofficial memory module in your Synology NAS and DSM 7.2 is updated. So do bear that in mind. But ultimately right now, these tests indicate, at least to me, that DSM 7.2 is not going to harm your uh, existing third-party memory installation on your Synology NAS. Just before we end this video, I did notice something after the call that was worth touching on, and that is that DSM 7.2 does still, at the very least, still highlight that it knows when you're using third-party or unsupported memory modules, because just because you're utilizing a newer version of DSM does not remove that warning. And as you can see, the system still does continue to highlight that you are utilizing those third-party memory modules in your system. So do bear that in mind. So if you're doing these installations for third parties and you're updating them to DSM 7.2, just bear in mind that you may trigger that rescan of that memory there and that they will get a notification to say that they're using a third party memory modules overall. But this has been testing third party memory and unsupported memory modules on your update from DSM 7.1 to DSM 7.2. I hope you found this video helpful. There's a link in the description to a detailed um, article that I'm going to write on this alongside a full breakdown of different memory modules that are supported supported currently unofficially by the Synology NAS system if you want to update your memory but just remember that if you want to keep things squeaky clean and you want to maintain your support go for Synology's own modules then particularly if you're running enterprise grade setups where you don't want to undermine your support long term with the brand maybe go for those first part first party modules down there but apart from that thank you so much for watching links in the description use the free advice section over on NAS compares big blue button on the right hand side use the free community forum ask NAS compares our uh, discord is now open below and finally if you have found this video helpful and you do want to upgrade your memory and you do want to utilize um amazon scan ebuyer newegg b &H, any of those websites and you do want to support us if all those things are true Use the links in the description to take you to those stores. It costs you nothing extra to use those links. But if you use them to take you to those stores, the result is that anything you buy, and I do really mean anything, results in a kickback coming to here on the channel. It's just me and Eddie making a video a day, two to three articles a day now. And on top of that, 
um, covering all of that free advice section. So that kind of passive support of what we do really helps us and allows us to keep doing what we do. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.